Okay, here we have the LPKF Protomat 100. It's a circuit board prototype milling drilling machine. So there's a requirement it needs 110 volts and if you're going to run the vacuum that goes with it, you probably want to get a high current breaker or put the vacuum on a separate breaker because if the vacuum pops breaker, you're going to use your computer and the machine and you'll have to restart from scratch or pick up, at least pick up from where you were. Um, the machine also requires compressed air, uh, six bar or just around 87 slightly more uh, pounds per square inch. The machine is already on, but it can be turned on and off by the rocker switch that's over here. I'll show you the compressed air. It's down and back. So that's the meter you can read that says you've got six bar. This is the vacuum that runs to collect all the shavings and fiberglass particles. You really don't want to breathe those in. In the bottom position of the rocker switch, the vacuum will turn on every time the drill turns on. So you need to turn this on, then turn your PC on. If you don't have a CAD package for your circuit design, there's one here, circuit cam. And then you can choose your tools and make whatever design you want. You can then export it to the various types. Since it's an LK, LPKF machine, you want to export it to one of these formats. And we start up the software for the it's Boardmaster. If you don't have the air on or it's not enough air, it'll complain to you until you rectify the situation. If you have the lid down, if you, I'm sorry, if you have the lid up, it will also complain because it's a safety thing. It'll ask you if there's a tool in the clamp or in one of the exchange clamps. If there is, you tell it yes and then give it a space where it can find a free space in the toolbar to put it or if you know where specifically it's supposed to go. Otherwise, you can click OK. And now it comes up. So you can, once the file is created in CircuitCam, you can import it from an LPF file, and then it'll save it as a job file when you close the software. So you can open the job file. So the file I created just happened to place the pattern in the center of the board. You can change that in the design process if you want or you can manually move this to another location. You just have to know your X, Y coordinates. So before drilling, you have to choose what phase. So the machine will not do every phase automatically. You have to choose a phase and then choose the bit that the, goes for that phase. So I'm only doing drilling because we have limited tools that came with this. So I'm drilling plated. Then I choose a tool and I'm going to use a 1.5 millimeter spiral drill. It'll now communicate to the protomat little map. It'll go to the location for the bit. And now it's in the main exchange card. The main card. If now, at this point, if you want to place your circuit board material, if you haven't already, I have, but I'll show. You can click the blue P, and that's pause. I also call it park. And now this will move. So now it's gotten itself out of the way. 
You can place your material any way you want. So this is already a news board. <clears throat> Found, I've chosen a section here where it's, if, I'm, if my guess is right, it should make the drilling holes there. So now it has the phase it needs, it has the tool it needs. Now you have to select which part of this design that that tool is going to affect because you can have different tools for different parts. This is just purely drilling, so you go over here and click all. It has now selected all of these points. And then if I click start, the tool will now go to where it's supposed to. The vacuum stops, the drill starts spinning, and now it's going ahead and drilling all the holes in that pocket. At least when my board wasn't perfect. Your job is done for this phase. You turn the drill off, it leaves the vacuum on. You can turn the vacuum off. It tells you how long each phase it takes. You can turn the vacuum off by pressing the vacuum button. And now the vacuum's off. Now if you want, you can get the machine out of the way so you can pick up your material. There's the pattern to be created. Two, if you want to add or remove bits from the tray, then it's job specific. So come over to the machine, computer. You want to make sure the drilling head is far away from, or some distance away from where the bits get exchanged. Um, the Park position that the software, when you close it, leaves it in is a bad spot to try and add bits from because it'll block the chuck and then you'll get software errors and it'll sit there forever and you have to reboot everything. So, <clears throat> you can click on the multi direction button and now wherever you click on this area, it'll move the head to that spot. Now it's a safe distance away. We can add or subtract tools. So to add or subtract tools, you right click on this bar and you get a menu. To make it live and usable, editable, click on up. And now inside the toolbar has come up. You have to do this with the lid down. And once you're here, now you can pick the lid up. So now I'm going to add a tool. And I'll put it in position number 13. So now it's in position number 13. I have to close the lid again. Now, also, I go to... Page down. Here's tool number 13. Let's say I put some sort of end mill in there. Then I say toolbar down. Now the software knows there's a tool of a specific purpose in spot number 13. We click OK. So now you have another tool for that phase, or whatever phase that tool is for.